know it's interesting. I've watched so many anime all the time. I know so much, and yet I don't proclaim myself to be an expert in any way, shape, or form. Yet there are people out there that will always have an opinion that differs from yours. It happens in general life and, well, basically in general, period. Sometimes you'll have an opinion on something and somebody else will say, yeah, that's a good idea, or no, that's a horrible idea. And the thing is, is that while each of you may have differing opinions, both of you are entitled to have those. Not everyone is supposed to like everything in the world. As friends of mine have constantly told me, you can't please everyone. And, well, that's very true. Anime, for the most part, falls under this. You can't please everyone. Some people won't like one genre, while other people will just flat out adore it. Some people won't be able to stand another genre, while others will look at it and say it's creepy, weird, and disturbing. And I guess that's what kind of leads me into this review today. I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this is Andrew Reviews. Jungle de Ico. This was a requested video from Oversized Tit Lover, a.k.a. Su XX Suzaku X7 XX. In all honesty, I don't mind doing review videos, and this is actually one that I have watched. I have watched this OVA. It's a three-episode OVA that came out back in 1997, and I actually got it from my local Borders store when it was still here yet. Mind you, it's long since closed and been turned into an AC Moore. But I got this from my local Borders Back, I want to say in the early 2000s, like somewhere between 2002 and 2004. Ah, yes, those were the good times. Back when I would pretty much just spend an evening watching anime trailers off of different DVDs just to hear the music so I could put it in my head so I could go to school the next day and hum it to myself in study hall. Yes, I had to find my own ways to entertain myself, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, Jungle Day Co., like I said, is a three-episode OVA. It could technically fall under the magical girl genre, if you think about it, as the two main characters in this, or at least the one, is granted magical powers via a necklace. However, it falls under the Ichi category. For a very, very good reason. The fact that they take some pretty bad pot shots at this, joke-wise. In all honesty, I watched this for the plot. The stuff that happens around and during or is relevant to me. The plot itself is what I kind of watch this for. It's what drew me to it in the first place when I saw it as a trailer. I wanted to get it. I wanted to see what it was about. And you have to keep in mind, I didn't have the internet back then, so I really didn't know what it was about. It was summertime when I first saw it, and I really just wanted it to see what it was. I wanted to know what this entire thing had to do. What was its deal? What was its function? What was its point? And I got my answers. When I finally was able to pick it up after ordering it from my local borders, I was shocked and amazed at how cool and interesting the plot was for this three-episode OVA. While, yes, a lot of people will probably degrade me for this because of the scenes and the plot for certain characters, I like the overall plot. Basically, here's what it is. An evil god is set to come back to the world because the main character's father, an archaeologist, stupidly took the artifact that he found containing the spirit of the god of destruction, Ango. He gave it to his daughter, Natsumi, who took the two jewels out of said artifact to make earrings for herself to wear, unwittingly unleashing Ango, a tiny little scruffy tiny little character that basically reminds me more of Flint from Flint the Time Detective. Yes, that tells you how old I am. Anyway, Ongo's a little shocked to find out that he's no longer in the jungle. Well, no duh, he's now found himself in Japan. And tries to get himself back there by, well, doing magic. Or so I thought. Actually, what he wanted to do was summon a whale because he had a bit of whale meat and he kind of got a taste for it. Unfortunately, Ongo screws up, summons a huge whale, and floods most of the city, which I'm assuming was Tokyo. Yeah. Kind of a, either a foreshadowing or just horrible thinking, but yeah. Anyway, in all honesty, 
the plot in this first episode alone hooked me for the rest of the show. I wanted to know if Ango actually was this evil god of destruction that the trailer led him on to believe. Even Ahem, the god that gave Natsumi the necklace that turned her into the flower spirit May, even said that Ango is dangerous, but yet Ango is an idiot. No, no, seriously, he is a complete and utter moron. The first episode ends with Natsumi and Ango landing on a jet after they launch a whale, I'm guessing into space. Yeah, the whale kind of got loose after Ango summoned it. Ango tried to send it back home, but it didn't work. May had to transform. Natsumi had to transform, I should say, into May. And that's pretty much where everything goes. The first episode really is good and sets the tone for the entire series. However, it's the second episode that kind of takes me a little bit of time to get used to. The second episode deals with Natsumi and her... Eh, what usually happens to girls. I don't want to get into it. I'm not a history or a physical education teacher, nor am I a physician, and it's kind of only relevant to this plot only. Specifically to this episode. For this plot of the episode. The overall plot, it doesn't bother. It's this particular episode It's part of the plot. Yeah. So apparently after Natsumi deals with that a few days later, she's able to, what she'd like to do since the start of the episode, go swimming. That kind of gave you what it was if you haven't been able to figure it out yet. See, I give subtle hints. Anyway, Natsumi's one classmate, Nami, ends up becoming possessed by the water spirit Rongo. And Rongo decides that she wants Master Ongo back because, well, they're betrothed to one another. She believes that Natsumi's lured him with her sluttiness and her... How did she word it so gracefully in the series? Oh yes, yeah, sleazy attire. So, Natsumi transforms into Mei and the two of them begin to duke it out for Ango. Technically, Mei, technically Natsumi, aka Mei, doesn't want anything to do with Ango, but she will do anything in her power to protect her classmate, Nami. And I'm pretty sure that was what the name was of the girl, but don't quote me 100%. Anyway, the entire battle ends when Ango, attempting to help, mind you, decides to cast a spell. At the same time he does that, Mei manages to grab onto Rongo's leg, just as Ango's magic is kicked into high gear, and causing all three of them to get knocked out. Mei sort of coming to along with Ango as he finally sees her laying in the now shattered and empty pool, going, hey, how you doing? She goes, oh, was that you by any chance? Yeah, I think I went a little overboard this time. Realizing that she's now holding the sprite of Water Spirit Rongo. Basically, the same sprite that Ongo kind of is. Ongo certainly remembers that, oh, her and I actually had a thing way back when. Oh, that's great. So now, unfortunately, because Rongo used up most of her powers and her magical form is gone, she cannot return home. So she asks Natsumi if she can stay with her. My guess is that she can be one step closer to Ongo, and I really could care less. However, it does pan out and play into the third and final episode, which I'm going to get into. The third episode, what I'd like to call Ongo, basically, deals with Ongo's character. Yeah, each one of these sort of deals with their own, and that's why I kind of like it being the three-episode OVA that it is. In the third episode, the Exhibition Hall in Tokyo is going to be having the artifacts that were brought out from this recent archaeological dig. My guess is it's probably about a week or a month later. I'm assuming that, based on the amount of days that separated us in Episode 2, and the fact that at the start of Episode 2, we were released the next day. Later on in the episode, we were a few days later. So it's safe to assume that we're looking at maybe a week to a month later. And I have to say that episode 3 is about the best out of all three of them. And why, you ask? Well, this is the one where all the shit's about to hit the fan. All crap's breaking loose. Ango suddenly gets a massive headache and becomes the evil god of destruction that Ahem had warned us about. At the same time... Natsumi's idiot classmate, Takuya, ends up getting absorbed into Ango, becoming what I'd like to call as his quote-unquote medium. Where you had Nami for Ango and Natsumi for Mei, 
Takuya is for Ongo. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. Anyway, Ongo decides to try to destroy everything, and Natsumi and Nami decide to transform into their respective spirits, with Rongo wanting to borrow Natsumi's power, which never really was explained. In all honesty, I would give it a pass, but you clearly said at the end of the second episode that Rongo had no power, that's why she couldn't return home, and in the next episode, she suddenly realizes, hey, I can merge with Nami and get my powers back. Yeah, that's honestly the one part I have an issue with. In all honesty, both of them end up trying to take on Ongo, but Ahem shows up and informs them that it's time for Mei to fulfill her destiny as the Mother Spirit. Yes, this joke was made at the start of the second episode that the reason why Mei is extremely busty, which is one of the draws that a lot of people have for this, is because she's the Flower Spirit. She's basically Earth's maternal spirit. And that's what her body encapsulates, the entire maternal spirit of the Earth. While she's the flower spirit, she's basically Mother Earth. She can control plants and wildlife and feel people's feelings. Anyway, she fulfills her destiny by doing yet another dance and chanting another magic spell. This turning her into a gigantus, which basically just made her taller and matched Ongo in height. You're expecting a massive brawl to save the entire world, but in all honesty, you don't get that. What happens is actually a lot more touching than you would imagine. Ongo attacks Mei, accidentally knocking off her top, and an embarrassed Mei falls to her knees. Ongo and Takuya at the same time kind of realize that they've done something wrong, and May realizing that they're only basically throwing a temper tantrum and they don't know why, just embraces them like any mother would. Just gives them a nice, warm, embracing hug. And that's honestly the entire thing. Ango realizes that the same thing happened so many years ago because we got a flashback at the start of the episode detailing this. And May got some flashbacks in between, so it does happen. I mean, Natsumi had the dream at the start of the episode, and some of the daydreams of her, of her a.k.a. May, doing the same thing way back when. Takuya, on the other hand, starts realizing that he actually kind of has a thing for... Eh, eh, believe it or not... <laughs> well, the girl. Natsuki. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, he realizes that he has a thing for her because they always fight, but he realizes it's a nice, warm, embracing hug. He feels just like he would feel all the time. Now, granted, I could have also said this might have been about his mother, but she was never mentioned before in the OVA, and I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that now. I don't know what happened, if her and her husband are divorced, and... Takuya is the product of two separated parents, or she just died. I don't know. They never explained it, and I'm not going to make any hypothesis on it. Anyway, it actually ends very touchingly. The evilness inside of Ango comes out in the form of a dark spirit, and Ahem finally does something useful for once in this entire three-episode OVA, and actually in his buff form, albeit with <clears throat> Natsumi's uh, underwear on his head, jumps into the fray and seals the evil spirit away. While I'll admit he does a good job at this, I kind of want to wonder one thing. Where in the hell was he when this was happening? He could have at least bought them some time. He could have at least, you know, tried to help out instead of acting like a dirty old man. He could have done anything more. But no, he comes in at the last minute, twirls his staff, lands on top of the evil spirit, and says an enchantment. The evil spirit goes away. He comes down in his buff form, changes back into the scrawny old man that he is, and that's the entire thing. The series ends with May still holding Rongo, or still holding Ongo, I should say, and Takuya. And her nice, warm, embracing hug, only for Ongo to wake up, her to hit Ongo in the head, and realize that he's still attached to Takuya. Literally. He's just popping out of Takuya like a tiny little overgrown pimple. And that's the entire three-episode OVA. While I'll admit the second episode is about the weakest out of all three, and personally I would avoid it like the plague, but 
you need to watch all three in order to get an entire feel for the whole thing. Now, it's hinted in this that Flower Spirit May was actually married to a hem and that they were together, and that Rongo is his daughter. So, it's sort of creepy if you go that route. However, like I said at the start, I actually watched this for the plot. This one actually has a pretty decent one, and I will admit it got me hooked just from the trailer alone. I didn't know anything about the entire series until I watched it. The trailer was what hooked me on the first place. And I have to admit, it still has me hooked to this day. It's still one of my favorite OVAs to watch from time to time, and it's still quite good, even nowadays, even though it came out a good 20 years ago. It still holds up today. But, I honestly would give this a solid 4 out of 5. It's gotta, I gotta take a star off, or at least one point off of this anyway, because of the weakness that some of the plot gives. Like, we never really were explained or told how Rongo realized she could use her powers by fusing with Nami, and we never really should have seen Episode 2, or that should have been done a little bit differently. In all honesty, though, it's an Ichi series. What do you expect? But, it's for you to decide. Like I said, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, including myself. I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Reviews. Thank you so much for watching.